My next guest worked at, a micro, at Microsoft for over a decade before becoming the representative for Washington's first district. She's the co-chair of the Women's High Tech Caucus and Internet of Things Caucus in the U.S. House of Representatives. Susan Del Bene, it's great to see you again. I don't know if you've heard uh, the conversation with your former colleague, Fred Humphreys, but you know, I, I am interested, you are looked at as one of the leaders who works in bipartisan ways on how to get smart technology um, opportunities in place um, in, in, in both the legislative arena, but also talking to the administration. Now we have a new administration coming in. What is, what is on the Susan Del Bene dashboard that you want Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's team to understand as they come into, the, uh, in, into their new responsibilities? Um, well, um, there's a lot of things. So thanks, Steve. It's great sure. to be here. Um, first, we have to continue with the COVID response and technology has been a big part of it. It's how we've communicated and, um, and kept in touch with each other. Many people are teleworking, but there are great disparities. So when we talk about access, uh, and I did say not just access, it's a combination of availability and affordability for broadband, um, critically important across our country. I represent a global technology hub in one part of my district. Another part of my district doesn't have broadband or even cell service. So um, broadband and affordability of broadband is critically important, not only during the pandemic, but beyond that to address those disparities. And then um, we have so many issues in terms of making sure policy is keeping up to date with technology. Clearly a top priority is consumer data privacy. I've introduced legislation, the Information Transparency and Personal Data Control Act, hmm. um, because we need to make sure that people are in charge of their personal data, um, make sure that there's clear policy and that there's clear federal policy. This is a domestic issue. It's also inter an international issue and we're behind. So uh, making sure that we address privacy is critical as well because it's foundational to addressing all the other things, some of which you've touched upon in terms of AI and facial recognition. Um, if we don't do the most basics on consumer data privacy, how do we address these um, larger, more complicated issues? So those are a couple places I would start. I think those are very, very good places. You know, it's very interesting to have Senator Tim Scott on, have you on, have Jessica Rosenworcel on, have Janet Napolitano on, who used to be, you know, in these circuits quite a bit. And everybody's saying, you know, connecting everyone. Uh, the ITI uh, report has, you know, essentially a 5G for all or high broadband networks for all uh, initiative. You know, I would ask you, is it, what, what are the barriers to that happening? Is, is, it, is it logistics because of where people live? Is it, is it uh, financial? Um, who are the villains in the story that are keeping Americans from being fully connected? Well, it's a combination of a few things, I would say. First, it's um, making sure that we do the mapping to really highlight where we have connectivity and where we don't. It sounds like a basic step, but I think it's important because then we are tracking coverage and making sure that we're closing those gaps. It's resources. Um, depends on different areas. There are different types of technologies and solutions that can be available in different areas. For example, I have um, mountainous areas where line of sight and other types of technologies may be a little more difficult to help provide coverage there. And so um, we need to look at making sure we're using the most effective tools depending on the area. But there isn't always a private sector motivation to provide that connectivity, especially in our very rural areas. So we also have to look at ways the public sector is going to step in to make sure that we have coverage across the country. Um, and so there's been innovative ways. Some of you are talking about in terms of using um, white spaces. I know Microsoft's been working with the agricultural community on that. Um, but uh, we've got to look at all the different solutions that are available and we've got to track and make sure they're implemented and that we have coverage and then affordability because having coverage right. there if people can't um, afford it, especially when we're using high bandwidth scenarios like video conferencing, um, that's become a more critical issue even in places where we do have coverage. Representative Del Mene, you're, you're part of the new, uh, uh, I think it's called the New Democrat Coalition, the, uh, you're a problem solver, you're in the, you know, the middle of this. Where, is, where are things like trade 
immigration uh, policy, you know, in these issues about America's engagement with the world where, you know, before the Trump administration, we had an inflow of talent into this country, into universities and firms, H-1B visa program, other visa programs that, that were, that were, you know, designed to sort of bring people in that were talented to help industry, you know, keep people here. A lot of that's been shut down or constricted. Um, trade is also controversial, uh, both in the Republican Party now, which is shocking, but also certain quarters of the Democratic Party. Do you think there's a consensus around um, these, these arenas of American engagement in the world? Well, I think, um, one, they are incredibly important issues to be addressed. And I know working with the Biden administration gives us a great opportunity um, I am the incoming chair of the New Dem Coalition, and um, we are forward-looking Democrats who've been very focused on making sure that policy keeps up with the, the way the world works today, um, looking at innovation and technology. And so there's the technical aspects of that, and then there's the foundational issues like you brought up um, in terms of international standards and policies, as well as immigration. Um, these are areas where I think with a, the incoming administration, we have great opportunity because we, one, will have an administration we can work with um, and be able to put forward ideas in conjunction with the administration to actually start making a difference as opposed to going backwards. Um, um, and it's been a very devastating environment under this administration, particularly for immigration. Um, and for immigrants to feel welcome in the United States. So uh, I think there's a, that's an area you'll see a lot of focus and a lot of opportunity. Um, and then when we wanna make sure we're leading on international policy, especially look at technology, if we aren't leading domestically, it's hard to lead internationally. Mm. So um, go back to privacy briefly again, the European Court of Justice struck down the privacy shield um, if we don't have domestic policy on privacy, it's hard to talk about how we address these issues internationally or how we lead in setting international standards. Uh, just I want to squeeze one more in before we go to a question from the audience. Um, you are an inspiration to many to get into public service. Also, you're a technologist. You were at Microsoft. You know, you, you're part of the technology caucus, the uh, et cetera. Um, and you are a leading woman in this field. I mean, are you finding the needle moving when it comes to inclusion uh, in, in the IT sector in you know, these discussions? Are you finding and seeing as you go out and speak around the country and engage different groups, uh, a more inclusive from gender, from race, from others? Because this has been one of the complaints and criticisms uh, in the past of the IT sector. Do you feel it's shifting? Well, I feel like we still have a long way to go. I think there's been some areas of progress and it starts at the beginning. Um, in making sure when we look at education uh, that we are providing tools to everyone in our country. So when we talk about opportunity and you know the disparities that we've seen during this pandemic highlight the challenges we face. If you're in a rural community, you may not be able to um, get access to the same type of education that you would in an urban community. Online learning may not be available. Um, we talk about STEM education availability, especially for young women. Um, that's a place where we've seen a huge push and um, ongoing areas that we continue to need to build on from the efforts on Girls Who Code and other organizations trying to make sure that we have STEM education equally available throughout the country. Um, and then we have ongoing issues. And I'd say some of this is technology and some of it is in um, the corporate world overall in terms of making sure that we have women and communities of color represented at, from the board level all the way down. And so there's been progress, but we still have a long way to go. Um, and we've seen even progress in Congress with more women, um, more diversity in our caucus. And um, those voices are incredibly important to make sure we're representative of the country and able to put policies together that address the issues um, for our constituents across the country as well. Great, well, thank you for that. We have a question for you from Scott. Scott? Thank you for taking my question. My name is Scott Bean and I'm Senior Director for Federal Law Enforcement and the Intelligence Community at Samsung Electronics America. Can you comment on the importance of a trusted, secure supply chain in healthcare education, and government mobility solutions? 
Um, well, I think uh, the the supply chain issues have been highlighted during the pandemic. So I think you've actually brought up a really important point and something that will be critical for all of us to look at as we, especially as we come out of the pandemic in terms of supply chain resiliency, um, trust, as you mentioned, and, um, and redundancy. Uh, we, no one really imagined a pandemic, a global pandemic where we would see supply chains cut off. But now that we have been through this scenario, I think it's very important that we look at critical supply chain needs um, how we, how our industries and as a country from a national security standpoint, how do we view that? How do we make sure we have ability? How do we plan? So this is going to be an ongoing conversation. It started, but I think something that's going to be critically important um, to make sure that we are not in the situation that we have faced um, as we were when we started, the, when we came into this pandemic. Susan, real quick, I'm going to squeeze one last one in from me. We just did a, a program at the Hill yesterday. I was so inspired by it on the federal workforce and, and how to create conditions. You know, we've seen a lot of people that had policy expertise, you know, over generations leave uh, uh, federal employment that, you know, it's sort of a different set of norms and habits uh, in this administration that we had seen in previous administrations. When you look at IT, you look at the Department of Commerce, you look at the National Telecommunications Infrastructure, and you look at rural broadband, a lot of the, I mean, there have been a lot of people in these areas who've left government. I'm just interested in a legislator, whether that's on your radar screen of concern. Do you, do you think that the, that we have the opportunity to, to bring some of that talent back or inspire young people uh, to come into government roles after, you know, a, a, a few years where, you know, politics may have been a greater filter than objective policy. Um, and, I, and I think I'm probably understating that. Well, um, I'm a scientist and a technologist at heart. Um, that was my career. And I do think that um, having an administration that believes in science and data uh, and supporting a workforce who is doing research, looking into the science and data to inform their decisions, I think that will make a huge difference. Um, I think we've lost talent. I think one a big change we'll see in a Biden-Harris administration is the ability to bring back great talent in so many roles, including in technology roles. And I think, you know, also when we look at workforce issues, um, I've also served on the select committee for the modern, modernization of Congress. I think it's also important at the legislative level that we have great talent. Um, so mm. to help inform members on legislation and especially on more challenging issues like technology, that's another place where we have um, great opportunity to improve um, things like the Office of Technology Assessment that used to exist. Um, bringing something like that back would make a big difference in helping not only bring great talent um, into the legislative side mm -hmm. too, but also helping inform policymakers. Well, Representative Susan Del Bene of Washington State, uh, co-chair of the Women's High Task Ta uh, High Tech Task Force and the IoT Task Force, incoming chair of the New Democratic Coalition. That was news news for me. So, congratulations! Uh, thanks Thank so much you. for joining us today. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Stay safe and stay healthy, everyone.